Hello. Okay. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another great edition of the Frankie Slauson Show and my summer interview series called Frankie's Icons of Pop Culture. And today we got a pretty big icon for you guys. If you're if you are all if you're into professional wrestling and you uh, remember a guy in the mid '90s who wrestled under the name Adam Bomb, or if you remember later on in WCW where he wrestled as Wrath. Or even later in the later days of WCW, as uh, one half of the team Chronic, well, I give you Mr. Brian Clark. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. Yeah, hey, it's uh, it's definitely an, an honor to be able to to chat with you. Uh, you're uh, you you're just one of those guys that uh, I really wish that uh, the WWE would have would have gave you a, a really big push. You know. Yeah, you know, um, I, I felt you know. He definitely could have got a bigger push. I think they had plans for that, but um, you know they sort of backed out on a few things that they they said they were going to do, and uh, it didn't happen. So I ended up uh, leaving and going to work for uh, TBS, which was WCW. Oh, yeah, and, and, and you know that's just the thing. You know, uh, you know nowadays, you know everybody wants to be like the next John Cena and stuff. And back in those days, back when you were wrestling, you know everybody wanted to be almost like uh, maybe even like Hulk Hogan or or maybe even like. Uh, Shawn Michaels or somewhere, but uh, but you did pretty you did pretty well in your career. I mean, you you know multi time tag team champion and uh, just uh, all all around good wrestler. You're you're built and uh, how did you get started uh, in professional wrestling? Well, you know, um, of course, as a kid, I watched it and I uh, was really hooked on it and enjoyed it. And, um, but I really didn't get the opportunity until after uh, once I finished high school I went to the military. I was a police officer in the military and from there um, I walked on to Central Missouri State University got a full scholarship football scholarship there and then from there um, I met Ox Baker while I was in college still playing college football and um, he introduced me to Jody Hamilton and then I ended up, after I graduated college I moved down to Atlanta and uh, Dwayne Bruce and Jody Hamilton trained me at the but I eventually turned into the power plant, but at the time it was not called the power plant. Oh, you mean uh, the days at uh, WCW before before it was before it was known as a power plant? Okay. Yeah, it was. A, it was actually an old carpet warehouse. It wasn't even. Uh, it was one ring and uh, no heat, no air. You know, it, yeah. it was uh, <laughs> definitely a, a throwback. Oh sure. And, and you got trained uh, pretty well, I suppose, especially if it's a... Uh, I've heard uh, Dwayne Bruce, uh, when he would train or people, he would definitely... Uh, it's almost military style, almost like. Very much so, because, you know, he was in the military also. And um, I don't, you know, I just followed his lead and listened to Jody and listened to Sarge, and they both uh, were very knowledgeable, and uh, they trained me really well. I, I needed a place to go to learn, practice, you know, before I... Yeah. Really, you know, to the next step. Oh, sure, and and, and that's kind of great that they uh, they had an opportunity that you had an opportunity to, to do that because uh, you know I'm sure trying to find somebody to train you uh, like I know a lot of other uh, people have gotten trained by like Killer Kowalski and stuff like that. Uh, was it just something that just worked out where where they were able to train you and you just uh, like just like stayed there or something like that or how did that whole well. well what happened was, like I said, when I, when I graduated college, um, I called and made sure that they would uh, give me a shot. And okay. so, Dory Hamilton would with those who that Dory Hamilton said, yeah, come on down. And so, when I finished school, uh, I packed everything I owned and moved uh, to Atlanta permanently. Oh, okay. And so, you know, I was sort of taking a, taking a big uh, leap of faith there, so to speak. But, um, yeah, that's what I did. Okay, okay. Well, that's cool. And, and then, uh, how did you eventually uh, get go from the uh, getting trained for, uh, with the, the Sarge to eventually going to the WWF? Well, um, you know, in Atlanta, that area in the south and southeast, there's a lot of independents and stuff that are running. So I would work every show I could, every chance I could get, I'd work shows. And initially, I worked a, uh, a show, and Paul Orndorff, I worked him on the show. And he was also working in Smoky Mountain at the time, so he put in a good word to Jim Cornette about me. Uh, and then Cornette had me come up for Smoky Mountain, and I try out. I didn't even try out, I just had a match. Yeah. And uh, Cornette really you know, liked me right away, and so uh, that was really my first break, was, uh, thanks to Paul and to Jim Cornette, both helped 
in Smokestown. Okay, okay. Yeah, Jim Cornette's a, a very well-known name uh, out there for those of you wrestling fans who are, are big on wrestling. And Jim Cornette should be a big, big name. Uh, he tra- he trained like uh, Yokozuna back in those time back in the time when you were uh, uh, in the WWF. Then uh, you said Cornette did. Yeah, uh, Cornette uh, trained uh, Yokozuna around that time uh, when you were in, uh, when you were in the WWF the f- first time. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't know that. I was out of work. Right? Oh, that he that he. Uh, well, he man- he managed uh, Yokozuna. I meant. I, I, did I yeah. say train? I meant manage. <laughs> okay, I got you. Yeah. All right now, well, I'm aware of that. Yes. <laughs> but uh, but uh, okay then uh, when you got into W when you uh, finally got to the World Wrestling Federation, how did they uh, decide that you're going to be called Adam Bomb? Well, you know, I, I tried out for those guys. That's what I was interested about. They called me up for a tryout, and I had to start with the gold dark match, of course. And I had it, and you know, they hired me on the spot the first night, basically. And they said, well, you know, go home and um, finish up your bookings and stuff, and um, we'll call you with a gimmick. Uh, they didn't say it that way, but, you know, they said, we'll call, it, call you with some ideas and stuff. Sure. So, uh, they came up with a few things, um, and all, they also came up, they pitched me the ringmaster, which was later Steve Austin. Yep. Uh, and the other one was Adam Bomb. And I thought of the two, I think, well, I was thinking that, you know, Adam Bond, I could do more with that than I could the remaster. Okay. So that's that's the direction I went. Okay, yeah, and and I can remember some of your classic matches, uh, whether it be with like Razor Ramon or or I think even I think you took on the One Two Three Kid. You had a lot of you had a lot of matches when your early career in the WWF, anyway. And uh, what were some of your most favorites that you that you liked the most? Uh, while I was up there at that time, yeah. Person, um, I would probably say, um, uh, to say I, you know, working Yokozuna on Monday Night Raw was really big. Um, and then, um, let's see who else, Bret Hart, of course, Undertaker. I worked those guys a lot. Oh, yeah. So those probably the, the top three, I would say. And, and that's just the thing, you know, that's why I was kind of surprised that they, you know, that, you know, they didn't give you a, a big enough push like they were, even if they were going to, you know, why they didn't uh, fo- uh, focus on that. Because I felt, you know, when I used to watch you wrestle that you could, that you're more the, you're not the, you're not the jobber. You're, you're a big guy. You're, you're more the main event, you know, and, and you're somebody that you know, should be like uh, wrestling, you know, at least the, the last card of the night or whatever, uh, you know, and I just don't understand why they just, just never did that for you. Yeah, you know, I think it was, you know, the whole thing with uh, collecting <coughs> everything, that, that really stopped a lot. That was a little, a little, a little political time frame there. Yeah. You know? And uh, I just felt that, you know, I had been I had been lied to a couple of times, and I was like, you know, I'm, I'm not real big on that, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. I said, I, I, yeah, I'm being lied to, I'm not real big on that. I said, you know what, I think it's time for me to go. And I knew Atlanta, WCW, I knew they wanted me to come in. Because I lived in Atlanta, and oh, so I, 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 talk, I had sort of talked with Bischoff, and he definitely wanted me, and so uh, that's what I did. And then they uh, they teamed you up uh, with uh, who was that James Mitchell and uh, oh geez, I forget the other guy's name now. Chris, Chris Canyon. Chris, yeah, Chris Canyon, and you yeah. guys were like almost like uh, kind of like Mortal Kombat characters in a way, <laughs> uh, Wrath and Mortis, I believe. That's correct. Yeah, <laughs> that's what was molded after was after molded on that, you know. Um, but um, it did, you know, that that little deal did okay. But I I did much better as a single competitor as just you know just wrath away from the other gimmick, you know, just being myself. Yeah, that really got over pretty well. And, and that kind of seems like uh, what makes more uh, wrestlers uh, successful when they finally just decide that you know what I'm a I'm better off as a single wrestler because. Uh, you know, sometimes when you're a tag team, like, like I think that's what kind of happened with like, uh, like uh, Legion of Doom. I mean, they're they're so well known for being a tag team, but when they went single, it's like, okay, you know, whatever. But yeah. but but to you, I think uh, I think being a more of a single guy, I think would kind of just help your career a lot more anyway. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I definitely think it was much better as a single. And uh, when you were in WCW, did you have a, a lot of favorite matches or, or opponents that you had? Um, you know what I did? I went on a, a run under TV streak of about six or seven months where I was just really squashing somebody every week. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I like working with Goldberg and um, Sting, of course. 
Yeah. Those two guys really sort of stick out that I can think of offhand. And uh, let's see, because I, I just recently moved to a town called Rapid City, South Dakota, which is like only 30 miles from uh, Sturgis, South Dakota. When WCW had their uh, uh, Sturgis events, did you wrestle at any of them? Uh, you know what? I did not. Okay. Um, yeah, I did that, which I'm, you know, I'm sort of glad I did. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it would have been kind of fun. I mean, Sturges uh, still, uh, they just got done ce- celebrating their 73rd anniversary, but uh, I kind of wish WCW, or at least WWF after WCW uh, closed down, would have continued uh, with the traditional Sturges pay-per-views, because I, I thought that was kind of a unique concept anyway. Yeah, it, it was okay, but I don't think it was really that great for the, you know, for the fans, and you know, I don't think the buy rate was that, did that well, so it's oh. hard to say, you know. Oh, so you're kind of looking at more of the financial, financial kind of. Well, you know, I mean, I just, I, I think it was uh, a little bit of a tough sell. Honestly. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know. I, I, you know, I, I was a kid at that time. I mean, I'm only 29 now. So, as a kid and as a fan, as, as I've been pretty much the last 23 years of my life, I think that's a great concept, personally, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let's see now. Uh, eventually, when WCW would close its doors, you tag team with uh, a guy who I think w- became kind of one of your friends, uh, uh, the late great Brian uh, Adams, aka Crush, for all you guys who remember. That's correct. Yeah, I ended up being um, my best friend. Really, you know, we uh, loved tag team with him. It was, uh, you know, it was special. I don't know how else to say it. We were very much alike. And, uh, in and out of the ring with that long break. Yeah, and uh, eventually uh, Brian Adams would uh, uh, be like one of the many wrestlers that are, uh, died young, and and I'm sure that was a complete shock to you when that happened. Uh, so that one time, my, my phone's beeping. Really well, oh, so. okay. Uh, uh, when Brian Adams uh, uh, eventually passed away, how how did you uh, how did you find out about it, and how did you how did you react when you found out? Uh, man, it was really weird. Um, I found out I was at work. Someone told me, and, uh, and then I, I called his phone, of course. And um, I think the big show's wife answered the phone, uh-huh. you know, and they told me what happened. So, uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was very hard, very difficult. Yeah, I suppose, and then it's like makes you wonder. It's like. Is this kind of just a pattern that's going on? It seems like uh, a lot of wrestlers, and I know this is like a big subject with with people, and and uh, even what you hear on the news, you know, all these wrestlers that die young because of either drug related or because of an accident or or just because they're young. And, and uh, luckily for you, anyway, that you're you're still with us and everything. And, and uh, you know, it's nice to know when when certain wrestlers, even though if you don't, you know, if they disappear a little bit. That they're still doing well and they're still alive. Yeah, and, you know. Speaking of that, um, I was thinking about uh, you know I, I have a Facebook page, so anyone who's listening, please uh, you're more than welcome to uh, check out my uh, Facebook page. And uh, there's a lot of talk of uh, some added to the WWE alumni section. So there's uh, a lot of photos on that also, oh, and sure. I have some new, a whole new line of. Uh, uh, Photographs and stuff, and eight by ten photos and posters on eBay. So, feel free to uh, you know tell fans they want to check my website, please do. It is also my Facebook page. Oh sure, yeah, uh, yeah. I'll definitely put the link down below, uh, uh, below to through this interview, like I always do with everybody else that I have on. Because I think it's good to uh, any type of promotion is good for you because you're you're one of those guys who I believe deserves to be in the Hall of Fame, uh, even if you never wrestle. I mean, you're technically retired, so but I still think that you that WWE should just say, hey, you know what, you know, you're making your. I think you said you're going to be making your return at the Royal Rumble, I believe. Well, that's the talk. There's, okay. there's a lot of talk. There's a lot of rumble about the Rumble. Yeah. You know, I mean, that, it's hard to say. I, it's, it's really up in the air, but uh, I'm open to it. You know. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, I, I think I, I worked out hard and uh, yeah. I took care of myself, and so I, I definitely I could do it. So what what are you uh, what have you been up to lately? Uh, let's talk about your late like what you've been up currently. Uh, I've been in the gaming business, uh, you know, the casino business for like oh. eight years. Okay, a long time, actually. Yeah, so uh, that's what I've been doing out here in Arizona. So, uh, oh, wow. so it's really nice, you know. It's, uh, did you ever? Did you ever think that you? Uh, did you ever think that you'd have to have like a, like? Did you ever think that pro wrestling would uh, 
would be something that you'd be able to read off of and, and just uh, never have to work again, or 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 was this something where you just work again? Yeah, I don't know. I think you can just sort of. I'm not that person just to sit around and do nothing. So I would have to. Say, I would have to do something. You know sure. What I mean? And um, and that's you know, that's what I did. I just didn't want to do nothing. Yeah. Know? Yeah. Do you ever still make appearances at like independent shows, or are you completely uh, done with wrestling? No, no independent shows. I did uh, New England Pro Wrestling Fan Fest okay. uh, about a m- about a month ago, and that place was packed. Man, I haven't seen that many people <laughs> in a long time. A lot of, so lot it did do well. It was uh, oh cool in Boston area. Yeah, a lot of people remember you. Oh yeah, yeah. We I had a steady line for about four hours. It seemed like you know all the people coming up. You know, we had a VIP type uh, setup, you know, for us. Wow. So it, was, it, was, it was a real good deal. I oh, that's it. cool. I see a lot of people. Oh, that's cool. That's cool, and especially uh, when, when you realize that you're not forgotten. Even if you you know are, don't wrestle no more, people will always remember. The real fans will always remember Brian Clark because you know yep. you're you're you're, right. you're you're the you're the big you're the big wrestler. You're the you know six foot six, two hundred ninety pound wrestler that you know. I mean, people will remember that, and I'm one of those fans too. That well, that's kind of why I wanted you on the show because uh, you know I don't want your your legacy to be forgotten, you know. Well, I, I really appreciate that. That means a lot. And uh, so that, that's, you know, that's one of the reasons, another reason that I did the eBay page is because uh, a lot of times I don't I don't get to make the uh, personal appearances or, or whatever these. So yeah. If fans, will, fans can actually get a photo and put it away, uh, sign it, and show it, they're not getting ripped off, in other words. Oh, sure. You know, fans, fans get a good deal and they know that they're not. It's not a fake, you know what I mean. But oh. yeah, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. Hey, no problem, man. I appreciate you uh, being on the on the show. Is there anything else that you want to say to your fans before uh, we close out? No, I, I want to say thank you for your time and uh, and thank you to all the fans. Again, uh, you guys are more than welcome to come uh, friend me on Facebook. And uh, I, I've enjoyed it. Thank you so much. All right, thank you again, to Brian Clark, and uh, well, we'll see you down the road. All right, bye. Take care. All right, bye. Okay. And that was uh, former WWF wrestler and WCW pro wrestler and independent pro wrestler Brian Clark, a.k.a. Adam Bob, and as we remember, Wrath, and one half of uh, the well-known tag team as Chronic with uh, Brian Adams, a- you know, a.k.a. Crush, anyway. Well, this is another great edition of the Frankie's Icons of Pop Culture uh, Summer Interview Series. we still got a long way to go uh, as we continue the second half. There's uh, some big guests that uh, are going to be coming here before we end the series. And just because the series will be ending around my birthday weekend, which will be uh, the weekend of September 30th uh, as we start the, the sixth season of, the, of my show on YouTube, doesn't mean that the, the series will be over. We'll still I'll still be doing interviews with people uh, throughout my throughout the next season, I just wanted to do something that was kind of fun for the summer, even in you know doing the first half in Minnesota and doing the second half here in South Dakota. Uh, I think it's great to be able to uh, still have guests and try to get uh, as many as I can. You know why not? So I hope you guys enjoyed this and, and go check out Brian's uh, uh, eBay page. I'll put all the links down below uh, as soon as I get them and as soon as this interview goes up. As well as enjoy all the other guests that we've had uh, this weekend. We also had Trini, folk singer and legend Trini Lopez, as well as uh, independent actor and producer Rex Sykes. And uh, today we had Brian Clark. And who knows who we're going to get next week if we have anybody. I'm going to try anyway. Uh, we just went here from my job at Safeway and uh, wait for that background check to be uh, taken care of. So until then. I am Frankie Slauson, and we will see you next time for another great edition of the Frankie Slauson Show and Frankie's Icons of Pop Culture interview series. Bye-bye.